Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I just got this preamble from the town. So as a preliminary matter, um, and there it goes. <laughs> what script it's here that we still want there we are all right so this is angus mcleod uh vice chair of the nantucket historical commission uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on this agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Tom Montgomery. Um, David Silver. Here. Mickey Rowland. Here. Uh, Abby. Here. And staff. Uh, no, Susan just didn't. Oh, is Susan in there? Yeah. Susan, you're muted. Are you here? Okay, I didn't hear anything, but I see her here. Um, and then um, uh, Holly Backus. And we have a couple of guests. We have Hillary Report. And Rita, welcome. All right, so um, this is all new to me, so thank you for bearing with me and having patience. My, um, my preamble keeps disappearing. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so this is um, the opening meeting of the Nantucket Historical Commission uh, being conducted remotely pursuant to the chapter 20 of Acts of 2021. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature um, public comment. For this meeting, um, The Nantucket Historical Commission is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identify, identifying how the public may join uh, for Zoom meetings. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Uh, uh, not all. Uh, some will be attending by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Um, we don't really have the meeting materials except for our agenda. Um, so the meeting business crowd rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, permit me to cover some ground rules for, the, for effective and clear conduct of our business. 
and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, Angus McLeod, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to ensure, uh, and if members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Um, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. All right. We'll have to do a roll call, Mr. Chair, since everybody's here. <laughs> is anybody on Zoom? Yeah, it's just Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, I think Georgia is. Isn't Georgia on? I don't see her on there, but she said she was going to. So um, without further ado, let's um, go on to the agenda. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I will move on to the first item on the agenda, and that's the discussion of appointments, operations, and organization and election of officers. Um, would anyone like to um, offer any suggestions? <laughs> Let's talk about one at a time, chair, vice chair, secretary. Okay. Um, um, shall we start with the chair? That's at the top. Yes. I'm going to nominate Angus McLeod for chair. Second. Well, thank you for the vote of confidence. <laughs> it's a rough start and, and, and huge shoes to fill, uh, but thank you. Um, I accept if, if that's the will of, of everyone, I'm seeing heads nodding. Um, so uh, I'll go around, I'll uh, go around the room um, starting with Mickey Rowland. Aye. Uh, Tom Montgomery. Aye. David Silver. Aye. And Abby. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Susan. Aye. Thank you. Um, all right. So we have a chair. Um, now we need a vice chair. Any suggestions? Second. Can I, can I make a comment? Please? Of course you can. Um, any, have we talked to George about this? Um, Making them a vice chair, because I'm not, we all know, on the aisle terribly often. Every now and then, there is a need for the vice chair to be around to uh, do things. So, uh, George is not on the Zoom. <laughs> I'm going to nominate Georgia, and if she just declines it um, at our next meeting, I think we can always vote a new vice chair. Um, oh, here, she's in the meeting. Oh, she just caught, came in. Perfect timing. Good morning, Georgia. No, we have just um, voted in a new chair. That would be me. Um, and now we're discussing the, the vice chair and there's been a nomination for Mickey and a nomination uh, for you, Georgia. Thank you. Um, do you have comments? 
It's very difficult for me to say, Angus. Um, I appreciate Mickey's background and Mickey's architectural uh, experience. Um, and I think I would go with a vote of the, of the commission overall. Thank you for that, Georgia. Um, so, uh, David? We voting? Uh, well, I think we can comment. I mean, there's been a, a nomination for Georgia and one for Mickey. Uh, I think both candidates would make tremendous vice chairs. So if Mickey feels as if he's you know, shown for time and and whatnot, then I think we should go that to the commission and, and give additional considerations for it. Thank you for that. Abby? I agree. I mean, I think obviously they both should say, but if we have to do more often, I'm happy to support either. I'll make a motion for Georgia for vice chair. Second that. Seconded by Tom. Uh, and I will I will um, I'll put a vote in for Georgia as well. So um, Georgia, if um, let's um, let's let's take a, a vote for that nomination for Georgia as vice chair. I'll start with you, Mickey. I'm voting for Georgia. <laughs> and Tom. Aye, Georgia. And David. Also for Georgia. And Abby. Aye. All right, I as well. That carries. Congratulations, Georgia. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we'll uh, continue on to uh, secretary. And um, our existing secretary is David Silver. Um, any comments from the Commission. I would like to be nominate David. Uh, I think he's done a great job so far. Uh, I don't see any reason why you know we have to it would be a seamless thing if we kept him on. So that's my vote. Do you have a second? No, second from Mickey. Evan? Second. Yeah, I vote for David. Okay, so uh, we have a we have a we have a motion in a second, and so um, shall we just go around the the, the room? Um, so Mickey, on. David. David. Yeah. yeah, I'm voting for David. Uh, for secretary. Aye. Aye. Okay, Tom. Aye. Support the motion. Okay, okay, David, Abby, uh, I support it as as well. Uh, Susan. Aye. And Georgia. Aye. Thank you all. So the motion carries and David continues on as secretary. Thank you for your great work. So we will now move on to the next part of the agenda and that's the, um, the Mass Historical Commission. If, 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 um, the, I'm sorry, the surveys of the his, uh, historical resources. And this is the uh, review of the draft survey forms from the fish lots pilot, uh, pilot survey. Um, has everyone had a, an opportunity to review those, th those two batches? We started on this uh, a couple of meetings ago and then um, Holly had requested having the, um, the comments sent to Powell. Uh, and uh, any one of you may have been doing that along the way. Uh, otherwise, um, we can maybe just discuss uh, what comments um, anyone has at this point. And Holly, um, if, if it's helpful, maybe it makes sense for you to take over at this point. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, so um, we all met last on June 17th. Uh, we went over um, some of the forms. Um, I have received comments from MPT. I think MPT is obviously input with them doing a lot of the historic resource surveys, having been the collection of them, knowing um, a lot of them due to any restrictions, marker program, what have you. Um, 
and as well as both Mary and Rita's um, involvement with knowing form bees. So obviously their take on it is, is very, very important and, and they know what SHIPO is looking for. Um, so I have actually sent some comments off to um, Ginny. Um, a lot of them were, were Mary's, which she was very, very happy to receive. Um, and I think both Mary and Rita have taken a look at this third batch. Um, I didn't really have any comments. It didn't sound like they, you all had any comments, but obviously if there's comments from the commission, I wanna be able to provide them to the, um, to PAL. Um, I think we are kind of halfway through the surveys. We should be receiving another batch at some point soon. Um, just wanna look for comments. Um, is, is this the stage where you, it's, it's appropriate to look at almost every, as, as many projects as we're familiar with and act, make individual comments on each survey so that they can be added to or if, edited? If there's additional information, not just obviously from gr gr grammatical issues right. um, that we may see, um, but if there's actually documented history that you know is not being shown on there, I mean, they're, they're pretty good and they're pretty extensive of documenting those individual surveys um, right. with those histories that are available. But if there's something that you're, you're privy to that they're not, yes, please. So they think they want to have that substantive information. Yeah. Okay, so now's the time to do that. Yeah. I mean, literally look at as many houses as we're familiar with. And, so and, and these form Bs, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, will there also be time later on for these to be edited? next year or months from now, or is it really now the Now is the time because they're gonna after at the end, and remember this project, this this round, if we, 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 you know, we yep. wanna be able to have these acceptable, MH, submitted to MH, MHC and MHC be happy with them and put them on map rest available to obviously the general public and on the record. So is the form being like a live document or is it really just done and submitted? It's yeah. done and submitted. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it's not, it's not like a, a plan. But um, obviously, if there's things that we see over time that get done, we want to notate them. You're, as you know, everybody who's involved with HSAD, you know that there's some of these projects that have been before the commission. Yeah. Where um, does that get notated? Like if there's a change or an alteration to a structure? Like it actually the next will, calendar year. Oh, next. Is it just, yeah, meaning? We'll, we'll yeah, go, that's going to be more of an administrative support. aspect. Um, you know, and for us internally in the, in the office to annotate, um, I will let you actually both Angus and Mickey are aware of one in particular that we have in the fish slots, which is 37 Fair Street. Um, that actually, you'll be happy to note that the um, proponents of that have actually downscaled that project substantially. This is the one on Darling? The, the corner of Darling Fair, yeah. which is Excellent. Yes. Very, very happy to see we that. Did see the changes to those plans. So right. that is that is awesome. And of course, those smaller changes, you know, um, will hopefully down the road will be reflected on this. Yeah. We can't do it prior to any work being done. Um, but we can know too. And I guess you know, um, maybe it would be helpful for commissioners to have a printed packet of the surveys so that they can go through and annotate them. Um, I've got them all. Yeah. If you want these, you can have these. Is anybody who wants them. Is that all it is? I mean, that's it, this is just from this third batch. Okay. Remember, we had two. Uh, that's the new batch. This okay. is the new batch. Okay. Or sorry, two batches. This, she did one batch, second of one batch, and second batch. So okay. my apologies. For me, so it's the third, two. but it's batch two. Okay. Yes. So the bear, sorry. The batch. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, yes. Obviously. Oh, you have additional copies too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. My friend of them. That's just one step up. Those are from the same thing as those. Yeah. 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 Well, I can probably, I mean, it's, it would be a lot to give everybody on the commission a full set of these. Um, yes. That's all right. But well, yeah, if but you have, I mean, you have the list of what they've done so far, yeah. right? I have. Um, everybody received a link and that link actually expires after so long, but I have downloaded all of both the, the proposed Word document and, and the uh, PDFs. So if there is one in particular that you have concerns on, you want to, I can send it to you. Just, I mean, however we want to make well, this easier. Know, from my position, there's a couple ways I can approach this. I've done, you know, some work on some of these houses yep. over the years, and I could probably recognize those houses that I've worked on. And, and bring you up to speed 
on the new work that's not reflected in these current quantities. But then being on HSAP, we see you know countless houses in mm -hmm. town. That's just building department information that I can't, you know, I don't, I'd have to research and get. Yeah. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of holes just because they're constantly being worked on. And I don't know how we right. and, handle those holes. Right. Or and, maybe we don't. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a certain line of we can't be um, proactive as far as assuming that particular work is going to be done because as you know hdc right. approvals are good for three years doesn't, doesn't necessarily always happen right exactly right. the case in point for 37 fair yeah. so yeah, yeah. it's that's kind of that's where we're going to have to just cut the, the the line here um but again um i think you know we're we've got as you're aware of substantial amount of information in these already versus what we don't have now right. so I, mean, I, can, I can at least go through the ones that i'm aware that's Perfect. Probably. If you want to give me a, a list, um, and I can send those to you, you can take a look at it that way. A couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Great. I'll let Jamie know. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, would anyone like to discuss any of the comments, or are you thinking to just submit them? There, there were a couple of general things that I noticed, and I, I jotted down some notes that were more each uh, for me. Um, Tom, you have your- I was gonna, I think what you're, you're gonna say is what I was gonna say, so go ahead. Well, I, um, I mean, if we, I know we have a, a full agenda, but this is kind of our time to, to talk about the comments for things. So um, if uh, if it's the will of the commission, then, then maybe we can go ahead and, and talk about some of those points, if that makes sense. Is that what you're thinking? Of? Well, what I was, I think what I was gonna say is, uh, Back as a commission, uh, whenever we decided to decided to do this, uh, it's taken a long time to get to this point. But the form Bs that we were shown uh, as examples of what could be done, and we were all getting up to speed on what a form B was, and any kind of information that was in it. Um, I think that Pal has gone uh, you know, way above and beyond what we had here in Nantucket mm -hmm. uh, for information on what form Bs we did have. And uh, it was looking at other towns that have done this um, that really kind of whet our appetite to have you know, this done professionally. And so uh, the information that we've got now with these form Bs that are coming in here are way, way, way in advance of what we had before, with not only pictures, but uh, you know, these people, are, instead of driving by and in a car, they're going house to house and they're taking photographs and uh, notating other things that are on the property that you might not see when you go by in a car. Mm -hmm. And uh, to have guys like you and Mickey, plus what we've got here as well, uh, I think is going to give us a pretty good picture. And I'm, granted, I mean, we're going to miss stuff. They're going to miss stuff, but they can't go on the property per se. So there's other things that we're going to, that you guys might be able to fill in. I think that's great. Thank you, Tom. I agree. This, um, this, uh, these form Bs uh, that Hal has created um, that are so comprehensive compared to anything that we've seen before. Um, it's not just the structure, but the history of the owners, and um, it's they've, um, they've taken advantage of all the resources that are here. The architectural historians and MBT and NHA and, and everything that Hal has provided. So. Um, I feel like we've we're on a really good track, um, but um, is there? I, so I uh, just there are little things uh, with some of them, but some others. You should unmute. Capturing qualities. Capturing qualities. Yeah. Capturing qualities. Yeah. Capturing qualities. Yeah. My live. <laughs> um, so um, there were a few things that I just. Um, I thought I should bring up. And um, I mean, they're little things like the Two Eagle Lane that we talked about before that um, there's a property line that goes right through the middle of a house. Um, and there's um, often in, in most of the um, surveys, there's a, uh, a reference to modern railings, which often is the type two fence. Um, so, when I think of a modern railing, I'm thinking of something other than a type two fence. So if there's another way to word that, that might be helpful to 
yeah. the locals. Those are those Nantucket um, idiosyncrasies, I think, just just like how typical the Nantucket, Nantucket style. Exactly. <laughs> um, and um, also the reference um, about trim uh, when we're talking about window trim specifically, a lot of them say um, uh, a, a plain wood surround <laughs> or surroundings. Um, but they, but, but that I've seen that reference for something that's plank frame, uh, which is more like three by three or two by three, uh, and as well as um, something that could be five quarter by five, uh, or uh, or even a uh, bull nose Greek uh, revival. Um, so, if it were possible to have that be more specific, that would be ideal. Um, because often that changes when windows are changed, uh, window trim changes. Um, there are also character defining features, so that's important. Is that something that should be maybe be like a bold category? It's like window trim style. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Because well, there. Right? I mean, almost every house has what they're referring to as Tuscan. Um, Call of uh, pilasters uh, for the for the door trim, um, so I. Uh, Demonstration details. What would be wrong with that? Well, it's kind of categorizing all the trim as one type instead of being very specific. I think. Right. I think that would be helpful in retaining that character defining element. Um, Six Eagle Lane was just a simple C and Cape. There was a little C before the big C okay. of the, of the um, you know, just in the style form. Um, and then seven eagle. Uh, I guess I, it's so helpful to have that information about major alterations that um, some of them are early on um, and some of them are later. But at what point is... Uh, you know, almost all of the forms uh, state that the um, that the original massing um, scale fenestration is intact, and I'm just wondering at what point it's not considered still intact, um, because sometimes they'll say mostly, but then there'll be you know, in one case there was a a shed dormer that was really uh, from one side to another, um, and and so I don't know. I, I guess you know as we review those things in the um, advisory boards and in the HTC, um, I I want it to be clear of what is um, you know what is character defining, what is changing the the massing and the and the original form of a building. And um, there, was, there was one building, I think it was, um, it seemed like there was a full, like 44, I think it was 44 fair, no, that was a different one, but like the chimneys were removed and the porch had changed and there were, the fence had gone away and the approach had changed to the house and the shutters were gone and the, the ornamentation and the rake boards was gone and the window sash had been replaced. And so, you know, at it, it, what point is it still uh, significant? But the overall mass was generally the same. Um, but there was another one that I even wondered if the um, if the picture was uh, correct. Maybe it was forty two fair, where there was a um, a two story house. Actually, can I have one of those copies? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, uh, yes, forty two. 42 fair. 42. Thanks. Thanks. 
Right. So, I mean, if you look at the original photo, there's a two-story um, house there. Um, you know, it's it's called up as a federal typical Nantucket. Uh, but then the, the current photo of it shows a uh, full width uh, shed dormer, flush shed dormer uh, on the facade. And you have to wonder if there's really room uh, between the you know the 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 eave and the second story windows if if you look at the old photo and then the new photo uh, thinking it's a whole new building it doesn't look like there's room um i wish somehow we could pull it up on the screen but um it doesn't look like there was really room to fit it you can take a, a look at it um but also the footprint wasn't didn't seem accurate in the locust plan. Um, so anyway, again, that was um, noted as largely retains massing and fenestration, but the fenestration changed um, yeah, on the facade and, and uh, part of it was covered on the, the gable end on the side and, and changed um, from the, the peak and the first and second story. Um, this is such important feedback, and I think Powell really wants it, and you clearly spent a, a, a large amount of time looking at these and mm. writing it. I just, like, if I were Powell, what would be most helpful is if I could get a packet marked up with the commissioner's comments and sent to them, mm. and mm -hmm. then, you know, we don't have a lost in translation thing, and you don't have to repeat yourself, you know, because you wrote it on a piece of paper, and then you said it, and then Holly wrote it. I just, I don't think this is the time to worry about saving paper. I mean, this is a, a nearly $50,000 project. It's taking months and months and months and tons of staff time. And I, I, I would recommend to you all that um, you ask plus department to use their big, really fast printers to print packets for everybody who has the time to go through them and, and mark them up and send them to Holly and send them to the ballot. I just think that will be most efficient and thorough and easiest for everybody. Um, and it's, you know, these have your name on them, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's so important because this is, these, these documents will not change. They will live forever. Even if they're updated, they will still be there. And I think what we've seen with um, like some of the stuff that's been done in the past, when the HTC gets them, if they see obvious errors, it causes them to lose confidence in the entire project. So getting these, um, you know, taking the time to make sure that little typos, everything with little typos to this photo doesn't match. All good points. Thank you. Mr. Chair, one thing that may be beneficial, like I mentioned, you have these in Word. So maybe having them sent out in Word, maybe you do any, I, I mean, I don't really want to do this, but a, a one or, you know, one email that has a, a few of them in it. In Word, right. you can do our changes in it as you see. That way, there's everybody can see what you've done, what you've done. Um, if you think that's you right, say not everybody to... can, not everybody has those kind of revisions. It's a, or whatever is best. I, personally, I think I'd rather have a hard copy packet that I'll just X out or add notes at the bottom or something. I think yeah. that's more clear than Word. I, I think it'd be nice to have it on one document, I guess. but. Um, those those edits and word always confuse me. Then what I would request, Mr. Chair, that's okay, is, is for everybody if they can do that, um, to send those to me in PDF. That way I can collaborate them all together and send them in ten edits. Can you print out stuff for me for for whoever needs it? Yeah, whoever wants one. To I also, I personally am getting benefit from the collaborative discussion that we're having right now. So I, right. I would also like to kind of continue that. And then can we also do that kind of in congruence to where, like now that Angus has said these things, it's going to help me as I go through the course. Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, these pictures don't matter. You know what I mean? Because I don't have the technical background. Maybe if everybody had their packet, then you guys could have a special meeting where right. everybody could bring that's, their packet that's, with that's, their that's, comments. That's, <laughs> yes, and also, as, as a builder, we have done a great deal of work in, in mm. the traditional arts. Right. And, uh, and so uh, I've worked on a lot of these places too, and I have also been on the guy that's done it. And so 
I can add a lot to that. I think all of these are good ideas. And um, the reason that, that I was bringing up specifics instead of just mail them in is that, that I wanted to have a discussion about it is uh, how do we want to steer this as as a group, you know, what's what's our impact? So, so is it possible for us to just kind of continue this discussion, go through specific properties that we've identified issues or changes we want to make, and mm -hmm. then special? Well, I, I think that I suppose we can, but it would be more helpful to me. I think I agree with Mickey that if we were able to go through this and then have that discussion and pick pick back up on what we're doing, we'll save time at this meeting number one. And, uh, and we'll have more information specifically, and we'll cut down on, you know, on uh, a lot of us just sitting around. Yeah. Plus, I'd like to buy, you know, try and deliver an avalanche to uh, Bali, you know, and, uh, and have her you know, buried under this thing. So, if it's possible for Plus to provide uh, copies mm -hmm. for everything, then we'll each take it, and as soon as all of us feel that we can have a have a uh, a comprehensive conversation about it, meet again. But I, I do think time is of the essence, right? Because what is the timeline? What how long do we have to do with this? Um, well, no, but should we just have the Um, so maybe keep us update, updated on the timeline. And meanwhile, as soon as we have copies, then we can go pick them up and um, and schedule a meeting. And are you wanting to look at both that one and two? I think it makes sense to just do them all, whatever is available now, to just go from there. I'll stop rambling about the details. <laughs> I have a comment on also the, you know, the, on the old um, survey forms, I'm pretty sure there was a box on some of them anyway, it said contributing or not contributing. Yeah, we're, we, we brought that up with MHC when we had, when Hillary um, and myself and um, Pal met with MHC, and that's really something at the end of the day that it's not in their form status mm -hmm. per se. Um, because again, you know, the form that we used way back when has evolved into this, and this is the BMP that the, the state requires. I think what is very um, beneficial that is the fact that the updates in the NHL has the contributing or non contributing that, as well as that's something that obviously we want to be able to have revised as it goes because some of that information isn't as specific. Um, plus, we also have the fact that HGC provides historic determinations and actually a letter that says this structure is contributing. Um, because that, yes, that was my whole question. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, they're often looking at the forms and if it's contributing, I mean, that's a whole different way of looking at the house versus the not contributing. So it's right. a very important topic for the HGC. It, it is. Um, one of the biggest topics I see on that is getting people to realize that those 1989 surveys and what structure says it's not contributing actually is contributing at this right. point. Yeah. That's this misconception. Yeah. They'll go, oh, well, it's not contributing. Right. Yeah, it, it is contributing now. Yeah. Um, but our period of significance is not going to change. So I think maybe there's something in here that um, we can ask how and, and MHC really truly have a statement. This structure, it, you know, it, it is within our period of significance, which is 1659, all the way from 1975. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that would be a question. Oh. Question number four. Hi, Mary Bergman. Welcome, Mary. Um, hi, sorry, I was late. Um, if we do have the list from the 2012 update, is there a way to just reference that then? Because I guess that's the other question is like, who's determining it's contributing? It's already been determined to be contributing by NPS. Right. Well, and then MHC doesn't have to because, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that, but you're right. I mean, the other form B's don't say. We, well, I'm trying to think outside the, we can have structures 
that may be contributing to the national architectural mm -hmm. significance. I'm thinking of the church. Those are prime examples of structures that are the significance to the overall architectural history of of architectural history in general, yeah. right, in the nation, but not necessarily contributing to the local district. So, um, well, I think that's Holly. If I if I may, I think that's part of why they didn't want to put that on the form. You know, there's supposed to be the skill in the organization to get the survey and then be familiar with the criteria from the date but also the themes and styles that are so not every 1974 building right history and those venturi structures were built within the same period of century but were actually called out in our national historic landmark as being non-contributing so so this commission would need to nominate them for listing on the um, National Register. So your, what you pointed out about the, that list, that is actually the guide for if it's contributing or not, the, the data sheet for the National yeah. Programmer. So are they gonna, who is gonna update that? Because we, as you point out many times, mm -hmm. it's not correct. Is this commission going to then reconcile these mm -hmm. um, survey by survey and go through that data sheet and say, we need to amend this? Or is that going to be PAL, or is that going to be you, or? It's a good question, but easy to be done. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> I've always given NPT credit for, for going through the whole process of hiring, um, you know, Brian and all them to, to, to do it, because it's, at least it, it's, a, it's a guiding light. It is, I can re reference, an old 89 survey that might be incorrect because there's hardly inf any information on it when the information that an NPT provides mm -hmm. with the NHL data. Now we can say, well, we have these you know, updated forms. Um, but yes, that, that should be part of somewhere. Well, maybe the thing to do is when the survey is finished, you know, a final task is to reconcile the NHL data sheet. I mean, maybe that's a question for Pal, and and also that fits in with the survey plan. Yes, because they're going to have all of the execution steps. Yep. And then you know, as these buildings come up, people can know, you can know that they've been surveyed. And just, you obviously know if it's contributing or not, but you can say, look, <laughs> this has been reconciled and this has been approved. There had been, I think, apprehension in the past after it was done um, for it to be used as a, as a source document. And I, I've been very strong forward saying, well, <laughs> it's better than people referencing the tax assessor's file. And people do that quite a bit. And so that was when, you know, I talked to the tax assessor, hey, can you put a disclaimer on there just like you do for zoning? And you've done that, which is great. Um, but yes, that is the source document. And sometimes I think we, we as historians, I'll put that as a caveat, we're all historians here, kind of rectify, okay, what, what is going on here? Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree that it should be, that should be done. It should be part of the survey plan. Are, are we good? So we have a plan, we'll get copies and then we'll uh, review them. And meanwhile, get a, a timeline of when we need to get them in and then squeeze in a special meeting to review that beforehand. You said two weeks. So you're thinking about having maybe yeah, two weeks or? Well, to have all this information figured out in two weeks, that's going to be a stretch. For me to be able to look at every house and official it's a stretch, right? Anyway, that's, that's a hell of a lot of yeah. Um, so what do you, what's a reasonable timeline for us to be able to get back and reach me? Um, I think the best bet would be for me to reach to touch touch base with Jim yeah. and say, Hey, you know, this is what the commission wants to do. How does okay. that fit in your yeah. time frame? Okay. I don't wanna I don't wanna, you know, say we're gonna do this and then it's gonna hinder the time frame. Perfect. Great. Thanks. You could also do it in chunks, like you could just you know, do the first batch, right? And, exactly. Um, and we to discuss it, and then um, because it's you have it's iterative, you might have better 
more ideas about how to it's probably going to be easier for Powell to um, be doing this incrementally instead of all all a pile at once. So why don't we weeks and just do batch one? Why don't we do that? Yeah. As I've been reading them, I've been reading them defensively, trying to think about what would somebody what is a word that would cause somebody to you know, for instance, there is a structure that was described as unremarkable. Now, I know yeah. what that word so means architecturally, true. but if I'm somebody who's trying to modify a house, then I'm probably going to go after that and say, well, see, they said this is not this house could be demolished. So, like things that maybe have a higher meaning in historic preservation, but the, these surveys are going to be used by more lay people probably than any other surveys in the metric database would be my guess. Thank you for that, May. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, shall we move on to the status of the 22-23 grant? Yay! Do, do you have any updates, Holly? Thank you. So um, as you probably remember from the first go around, these grants are very prescriptive in the process and um, procedures with um, the states and then procurement and blah, blah, blah. And both, I um, basically, did a draft RQ, um, had them both take a look at it, and both had changes. There's changes from paperwork from last year, there's changes from procurement from last year as well. That happens. Um, so, um, as of um, this week, I've been in communications with procurement, and um, they added their additional information that I had to have in there, which is great. Um, I have been working on um, I think I mentioned this to you before. Our our proposal with this last grant we put in there was to finish the fish lots. Um, and remember, the fish lots have actually expanded a little bit based on our survey plan. So we had a very rudimentary drawn plan that it goes to um, one side of Orange Street, over to the one side of Pleasant Street, and down to Silver and Main. So there are, are quite a few, believe it or not structures that were not done with this pilot that, we, that we're working on. Um, and what I've calculated that to be is roughly around 100 additional. Um, MHC has suggested that about 140 surveys we'll be able to do um, before this, this second grant, uh, fiscal year 22. Um, so I have a list, obviously, with the help of NPT's information they have. Tabs, HDC surveys, um, PIN. Um, I've collaborated this group here, and this includes, like I said, residual of, uh, we had a couple on Charter, Eagle, Farmer, High Street, Hillers Lane, Jefferson, Lyon, uh, Maine, Orange, Pleasant, Pine. Um, believe it or not, a couple more on Race Court. Silver and Summer and Traders Lane. I started getting into Easton Street, so that's going to leave us at 140 for 40 for, for um, grant points. I think um, I did reach out as you all suggested, as well as it was suggested with MHC, um, with PAL on what their recommendations are. I think it's a little premature what their survey plan is for grant point area, and we know how extensive grant point is. So I do think that that's going to be a multiple phased effort in itself. Um, so looking at from a from, from staff's perspective as a as a um, what I see as the most endangered, if you will, um, what we've seen coming through with HGC applications, a triage. Um, so I was um, thinking about taking Easton Street and basically anything that flanks the ocean. So it'd be up Easton and over Hulbert as the first phase of this, and that would be about 40 um, HDC form needs. I will notate that that the last the lot of the structures down on Brant Point area have been documented with that last 1989 survey. So there's a lot of HDC surveys already on macros. As we know, some of them are not existent or have changed sub substantially. So um, we need to leave some wiggle room for those to be updated and maybe codified. So for instance, I'll give you an example. Going through them, 
Um, we know that 50 Eastern Street is the wall in it. I mean, the white, white elephant. White elephant was modified in the 60s. My great grandfather actually, sidebar, and the contracting company did that. Um, and obviously, since then, it has been modified again. However, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different HTC surveys on file with Mapbricks right now. So if there's going to have to be a little, little wiggle room to say, okay, well, this property at 50 Easton Street, historically, pun intended, has X amount of HGC surveys on file now, we might need to only have one, but all of those are brought in for one form B. So see where there's a little bit of, of having to work with the, the, the information and, and justify where we're going to get. Ready. So that's what I've been working on. I would hope in, that the commission is okay with that approach for Brant Point and, and um, without, with, with, um, in lieu of actually having a, a direct um, course of recommendation from the survey plan. We do not have that at the moment. That's where I'm at. <laughs> oh, and I did want to make a big thing is we're looking at advertising the RFQ at the end of this month. Great. Any comments? From the commission. Well, so we have a we have a budget for these surveys, um, which is and it starts with what Mass Historical is is giving us, and we're matching their budget. So it's a, okay. Out. So so the 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 grant that we all chipped in to um, put together that second round um, is a twenty thousand um, dollar fifty percent reimbursable grant. So we put in the twenty thousand. They give us twenty thousand. We will get reimbursed. So it's a forty thousand dollar project total. Um, so that's where the and they and MHC came back and said that's equivalent to one hundred and forty surveys. So based on what we put in our grant application, where we said we want to finish the fish lots and then go into Grant Point, um, we need to really keep in mind that Grant Point itself is going to be a, a multiple phase project. So I mean, this, this is going to take years to do. This, you know, I mean, there's so much downtown mm -hmm. beyond the fish lots. There's a lot of rain point, a multi phase, mm -hmm. and this is a ten or fifteen, sounding like it's it's a one long project. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, can we expedite this? Can we find more money somewhere? Can the Mass Historical have more money they can give us, or the town? The, the town may, the town may, yeah. and that might be something to discuss. Um, with the planning director on putting additional funding within the next for the next fiscal year. Of course, we just got into fiscal year 2022. Um, so for fiscal 2023, maybe they can put instead of fifty thousand dollars more. I, I really don't know. Um, although I think it was not the full fifty this past time. I think it's twenty five. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I think they figured that um, MHC tends to give $20,000 as the maximum, so um, they're, they're match. So they're kind of scaling back the budget to fit the pace of MHC. But Mickey, I think your question um, can best be addressed by the survey plan. So right. the reason why we did a survey plan is because they're going to quantify the work, Correct. prioritize the work. Right and outline a pace of work. And okay. then if we want to turn the crank faster, yes. we'll know, you know where to put the leverage. I think the problem is actually not so much money, but time, like it's hard to, we're lucky that how, I, I often yes. think, thank goodness, Jenny is like her um, college roommate lives on Nantucket. I mean, I, I often wonder like, do, would they have even bid on this if they didn't have that? So, right. you know, we don't know, are they going to bid again? Holly's time is limited because, you know, so and it takes time for us to kind of review like, it all too. Exactly, we're talking, time. you know, about the review time. Yeah. I I actually had a, a question because I also feel like, wow, you know, we have just a lot of a lot of applications mm -hmm. coming in. We need this information right, right. away. I was, I was under the impression that um, it was less about finishing. It was less slots, about finishing the fish lots finishing the and more area. about finishing the high priority area of the fish okay. lots, and that it was actually going to be okay. That there was and, some um, um, so that was one, happen. and I know we discussed that in the yeah. last meeting. Um, um, so that was one, and I know we discussed that in the last meeting. It's up to you guys. All of the, all of the, all of the, all of the 
And then the second thing, um, but maybe it's just not the is, And then the second thing, comment about Grant Point is, is um, the second question about Grant Point is I know Easton and Holbert are high visibility areas, but there are also all those little cottages like Cliffside. Um, so I I don't know. I I would just want to hear a debate about do we really want to march down Easton and across um, Holbert, or do we want to pick some of the more workman's cause, like some of the more vulnerable and less well understood. I, I would just love to hear the quick debate that. Yes, Tom. Um, we got to start somewhere first on that, but uh, I don't think there's many more legitimate structures there that's more endangered right now than the Auburn College. And, uh, well, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's up. It's, it's up one block. Yep, and MHC looked at it first. Huh? MHC had to look at it first after 91. Right. And so, you know, that one's been there a long time. And so you know, everything's changed around it. And now they're doing something, with it, which is fine. But I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of calling on this. I think that you know, we got to start somewhere. Why not, you know, do those? And then if we, if we decide to go inland, uh, uh, along the along the uh, block there, uh, like Hillary is suggesting, that could be another whole thing because there's a gazillion of those down there. And and I, I don't remember the name of it, but I know it's a very old house. It's if you go between the uh, the Antarctic Hotel and the uh, corner house there, uh, there's a little house in the back. It's a mm -hmm. salt box. Yes. That is one of the oldest houses down there. And that definitely needs to be included whenever we go there. What well, I mean, is there any reason we can't sort of cherry pick the houses we want to have on the survey? That's what I was just going to suggest. Absolutely. Lot yeah. after lot, because there's so many new houses in the area. We're not going to get those. Right. I, uh, I, when I did the survey of, of in town structures and budgeted by, you know, last day sold and things like that. I actually started in Grant Point a little bit just to get an idea for, mm. for like what, what was there. Mm. So I have about 40 structures in Grant Point that I identified as being vulnerable or qualifying for the revolving loan fund that we talked about. And so maybe we could use that and then just, I, I do want to start doing it. So I don't want to get too picky about it, but if we can cherry pick, maybe that makes sense. It sounds like they're interests from all different directions uh, not just on the island but then the the, the people doing the surveys and, and mass historical so um, maybe we all come up with our lists and match them up and and cherry pick of what uh, is prioritized that's the thing sorry i need to be the bearer of bad news yeah this is not I, I have an incomplete list but it, it's a list there's there's 30 to 40 structures i have a question holly i mean for the purpose of the rfp do you have to be specific about which structures are going to be surveyed or can't you just say you know however we can, we can do what we did before yeah. where we had more than what we were going to have in the fish lodge. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can have more. So again, I think instead of pick, nitpicking on which ones, we can include yours, include one, and one everybody else. But again, I, I you know, um, it needs to be clear that we're that we're saying we're 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 putting a list together more than 140, which is what we're going to get out of this grant in this particular phase, um, and have exactly that having it so that it's clear that anything um that the, the consultant sees as more of a priority based on the upcoming survey plan recommendation that's what we'll choose and that's yes that is that is something that um that peter said we have like a subcommittee with the charge of this list we meet down there and we kind of walk down and check off on all this list I mean, I, quite frankly, I'm doing it based on the fact of these applications that we are seeing at the ACC. So I'm using my knowledge of the VAX. Auburn Cottage is one of them. Um, there's so many different lines down Eastern Street. There's so many different lines. And also, not only that, but we, we know that have been demolished. Right. 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 That's, that's there's history yeah. that I've received based on the HDC motion for approval for the download required for it that I can go, hey, Whoever our consultant is, here's this information that you because we're not again, we also this is these form fees are not just to go, okay, this is an existing historic resource. We also want to document those historic resources that are not will no longer there in perpetuity. 
you're, you're on the same page on that, right? Mary? Yeah, I yeah. I mean, my thoughts as far as since we called these things, we both my name. Um, <laughs> my, my thoughts on this are that I do agree with Hillary that I think those smaller structures are, are interesting. There's a lot of great Victorian structures down that one side street when you have that yellow house that's set back. But you're seeing the most turnover on, on Brant Point, Holder Ave, and Easton. And the, and the work that's going on is the most disfiguring because they are going up and, and out and over. So I do think this needs a high priority area. Uh, for what it's worth, we've been working on, I don't know when it's going to be done. <laughs> a project that's essentially the D chains for like um, 27 all the way back to nine. So I can give that to Powell when it's awesome. done because we don't have a ton down there. I think that's the other thing to keep in mind is they've been able to get this done so fast because we had an amazing amount of resources yes. that we could give to Powell yes. for, for the fair street. I, I did give you props on that. Oh, I know. Sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's so much money that's passing through Brand Point right now. Yeah. Right. That, that's that's my concern. Is is that we want to we want to have the 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 information forever of what was there, but the applications that we're seeing, as you can as you know, are are um, you know it, it's a there's a lot of change of history and how much is really left some are completely gone and others are 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 mostly gone and so um it seems like the information that we we want and need is for the ones that that will still be existing when people are reading these right get that first and then go back and do the ones that are like 45 gone um, my point on that was, for instance, the, I don't remember the number, so bear, bear with me on this, but the, the Conk Hotel. Yeah, uh, that was on the Yes, and I want, I want to say, um, going to that right now. Um, and, you know, that was an example, and, and even the Sanford structure, mm -hmm. those buildings that were built in the early 50s, right before the HDC was created. And guess what? They demolished structures that were built in the 1880s. And now they're trying to emulate what was there previous. It's it's kind of mind-boggling. Yeah. But I, that's part of our history that should be documented. Now, maybe that's something that can be recommended as an area form of these mm -hmm. certain areas, because that's been another keep in mind. That's how we're going to tackle a lot of the other parts of the island is Powell is going to recommend, well, this part of the island, we're going to do an area form to cover X, Y, and Z. But these over here, we're going to do individual surveys. So that's another thing to put to, to think about as well. Um, again, you know, we're kind of a little bit in the blindness on, on that aspect, but um, yeah. So, so what I'm hearing is, is that it, for the, the the amount of grant money that we're applying for, we're most likely going to end up with the same 140 structure surveys um but does every um does every address that we might be interested in need to be captured in what we present in in yeah. our um so this attachment proposal is what the whoever decides to give us a bid on is going to to look at but it won't be until you know we pick one whoever applies and it's like we did with with um how on actually saying, okay, out of the 125 uh, addresses you guys provided, we're only going to be able to do 100. So these are the ones out of those 100. And then we talked about the high priority areas and those kind of things. And at that point, we may have additional properties based on what's going on down on Grant Point to say, you know what, those are more high priority than these are. The more properties on this form that we list, I personally think the better because we can't add to it. Once it's created, we can't add to it. That's what I'm thinking. So if we could have uh, just the addresses of your list yep. and, and then yep. we can have a subgroup that goes around and picks things that, that may or may not be on that list, probably the things that aren't on it, um, that, to be able to add to it just so that it's an option and then then that way they're on the list and then we can figure out the prioritization afterwards. Yeah, and that solves the problem, I guess, doesn't it, Holly, that you have, which is you want to get this RFP out the door mm -hmm. so you can just put everything in it Correct. and specify. Yep. So then, you know, we have plenty of time. Who um, who would want to do that? I was just going to say, can somebody make kind of a uh, recommendation to do that? 
So what we're looking for is a motion to um, to have a, a small group um, do a, a, a survey quickly <laughs> um, to come up with uh, addresses to add to Holly's list. Well, sorry, I, if I may, Mr. Chair, yes. I thought what we were saying is that Holly would just put all of the addresses in. And then the subcommittee would, in, in anticipation of the survey work, when we actually get it awarded, have you know plenty of time to go through and prioritize that list. That would be easier. Right. Yeah. Just, Just to put I mean, everything in brand point. Do this now, that's great. But I'm like, there's so much other work. Yeah. So yeah. we're talking. That gets her off the hook and, yeah. and gives us more time. So we're talking North Beach Street to to Bathing Beach to. Uh, to Holbert to Easton. Is that the whole the extension of is it Jefferson? To... Yeah, I think the motion you the whole thing? want is that um, for the purposes of, a, of the RFP, correct me if I'm wrong, for the purposes of the RFP, um, all of the addresses in the proposed survey area, which is the remaining of the fish lots and the um, Grant, Grant Point cliffside area in total would go into the RFP with the instructions that 140 would be chosen. Is that Holly what you're thinking, or did I misunderstand? Well, there's going to be a lot. If we put all, you got to remember how big Grant Point is listed on our, our survey plan. It literally goes from Holbert to to Getty's Beach yeah. in that whole trunk. So do you remember how many addresses it is? I do not know. No. But if we're talking about prioritizing 140 buildings within what's remaining in the fish lots, is that we're including that? Well, yeah, but I think you guys need to Here. decide whether or not you want to finish the you, fish lots. Sorry, I didn't get the What's the number of so, properties on this? Um, there's a hundred, which is what I I figured out was left, and that's not taking like there's a couple of contemporary 1980s here and there in the fish lots. I didn't include those. I right. took those out. Okay. So I did. You've already filter. entered it there. Yes, and and it came down to a hundred. So what you have um, includes the leftovers from the fish lots in Correct. addition to Brant Point. Correct. And then there's then I started working on the um, Brant Point because again I was looking at the as a triage. So I think it'd be great to have to be able to look at the all that whole list and pick 140 houses that we think are the most vulnerable, most, most biggest concern rather than say or we're just going to finish the fish lots. But frankly, just to give you an idea, and 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 this kind of goes back to what I think um, maybe Mary may have maybe see a lot more than than maybe we. But this the the residual that's in this area listed as fish lots. These structures date anywhere from the seven. There's actually one from the 1740s, believe it or not, all the way through the 1940s. So we're still. De I mean, and again, I I sifted out anything in the 80s. Yeah. Um, I mean, we got a couple of um, seventy-eight on here, but you know that that actually needs to go. But then again, here's another thing: I'm also basing it some of this information that might not even be correct. So again, at what point is that triage aspect? I hate to go. Oh, I took that off the list because I was assuming it wasn't as old as it is. So again, putting it out there and then having our consultants go, okay, this these are the ones we're going to do. Um, so we right up until they start. I mean, at what point do we have to edit the lists? You know, select we, the house. Once the, the consultant is chosen, we will have flexibility with the consultant to figure out which ones are the 140 that we okay, want. So we have a little while to, to pick and choose 140. Houses. A little. So but, as long as the list is, is inclusive, we can continue. It, there's, there's, is it counterproductive to have it? so inclusive that it includes everything in Brant Point, everything in that area. I think that's crazy because think about it this way. Um, <laughs> I do. No, I, 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 I to, to, for lack of a better word. So I thought I was doing well um, the first go around. This is a little learning curve on my end too. Um, we, we knew from the pilot we were getting 100 surveys, right? And instead of just giving them 100, we gave them 126. Right. So we have a, a, literally about 25, 26 that were pushed to the side. Well, few of them, especially on Orange Street, really and truly should be documented. So those should be in there. Um, 
the more you put in this document for the consultants to choose from, I think the better. Because here's another thing. We might have more information coming from NPT, PADS, you know, whoever has already given information, but then we have others that hardly have any documentation whatsoever. And I think those can be technically more of the vulnerable aspect because it's this misconception of, well, if we don't know what we have, we're just gonna go ahead and just, just you know, we've seen that before. When we have lack of information documentation on a structure, what happens? Well, <laughs> we have structures that we're told that they're built in the eighties and they really weren't. Um, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm confused because um, it sounds like you've got a hundred and you're saying the more the better so that we don't miss anything and if we include the whole thing you're saying it's crazy so uh, i think maybe we go back to getting the list from you and then having a, a, a subgroup that goes out and picks ones in addition to that that we would might end up at 140 or 125 but um but there are other structures that are aside from the main easton and holbert avenue that that might be more higher priority that would be helpful for brand point personally i i think this is just you know my thoughts of just retaining the hundred in the fish logs to finish it understanding that we didn't necessarily have to do that but again why you know what I mean? Why miss structures? Right, because they're out structures is we delete them on the list anyway. Right. Yeah. And and per se, maybe we they, they come to find out like these ones that were done in the 70s. Maybe they are actually older. Maybe they're actually more contemporary than we think. I mean, and if they're contemporary or older than 75, then we don't have a survey on and we you know can go to another. So having more than 140 on this list for both areas is important. Yeah. Okay. So I encourage the areas down on print point that you really think that should be added great i think that's awesome because again there's also a lot of surveys out there for the brand point area that some of them need to, need to be updated with macros in general that they're not even there anymore right and in the fish lots i i mean i noticed that there's a building from the 50s right that got the form b survey but you're saying that there's one that hasn't got one that's from 1740. you know why that yes. is i guess it's because we had the same conversation yes. when it came yes. and holly said here's a list of 140 and mm. you have to pick 100 and we said well let's just do it methodically yes because it was overwhelming yes. to go through and prioritize yes. so just that's the i mean it is a big task it sounds like mm -hmm. Holly wants to include the rest of the fish lots on the list and she's comfortable with that. As regards Brand Point, it sounds like you guys want to put together a group and walk around. You can follow Holly's recommendation about Easton and Holbert, but then you want to scan everything else and just make sure that you're not missing anything that you'd be really regretful. Back to the really motion for that. that. Is that the motion was? Yeah. yeah. Well, my, my suggestion was that it just be everything, but that's overwhelming and not a good idea. So, All right, so we're sticking to Holbert and Easton, and then, but we can edit that and add to that. Before, before the RFP goes out, yeah. you're going to get a group together with that list of, Holly, of the comprehensive list that mm -hmm. Holly's going to give you and walk around and see if there's anything else that should go on the RFP. So anyone, uh, well, let's start with, uh, with the motion. Second it. And so all in favor, Mickey? Aye. Tom? Aye. David? Aye. We've lost Abby. Um, so Georgia? Aye. Thank you. Susan? Aye. Thank you. Um, so we'll no. just decide, um, we'll decide. What is that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll decide who that's going to be, or do we need to do that now? Do we need to decide who we that? We had a subcommittee for the, this the one grant, um, but this new one, we, we can do a subcommittee for the rate members. So does anyone want to volunteer for it? I'm happy to help with it. I'll do it. I would volunteer myself <laughs> just because I do have somewhat of a list of structures and graph that I that's what you were working with Georgia on yeah. Georgia just offered as well okay. um, I'd love to be but I'm not you know I may not be present enough to do it so I can I can contribute on the side but not attend I suggest that Mary also join if she or Rita if you can for the walk 
that makes sense if and either of you are Betsy available. Tyler has always been part of the, that group yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I want to make it very clear that this is going to be posted July 27th. Mickey, is this something that you can um, get into uh, can before do then? Four or five days. I, I can do, do it. it. I can do it tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Check one thing, but I can. I can. So who else are we talking about? Georgia. Georgia offered. I offered. Um, yeah, who's, yeah, who's most available? Oh, yeah, that's all we need. I've, Mickey's got um, history in Brant Point, too, which is helpful. Um, as long as I'm available, I'd, I'd like to do it. Okay, so Georgia, David, and Mickey. Okay. And anyone else that wants to join as long well, as it's not part of the If it's a forum, yeah, if it's not part of the commission. Right. Okay. Um, Abby, we just had a, a motion and seconded uh, for a, a small group to uh, to check out the Brand Point area and add to Holly's list. Um, okay, you're, Holly, you're going to send us the list that yeah. will be working from. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, so let's go on to the next thing: protecting and maintaining Brand Point Light and Great Point Light. Um, so follow up actions from June seventeenth. I can give you guys an update about a conversation I had about Brant Point. Um, I had a conversation with um, a board member from Egan Maritime um, with this, you know, just very general, very preliminary about the process of the accessioning, whether or not it would be consistent with their mission. This is, I don't, I know this is a public meeting and recorded. I am not saying that Egan Maritime is going to do anything or that I know nothing about whether or not it would be right for their organization. It's completely up to them. Um, but this commission had earlier said that one way to contribute and try to preserve the structure would be to explain, you know, what is the process so that it's just a little bit easier if somebody raises their hand and wants to do it. So I did have that conversation. Um, I also introduced the lobbyist who I felt was very good um, and really well resourced uh, with ties to the Coast Guard, to Marine Law, um, sorry, Maritime Law. Uh, so it's really, you know, up to them if they want to go ahead and, and try to take some action. It was resolved that we would write a letter to the town, um, and I was going to write that letter, and obviously with all of the um, stuff that's happened, it's as you can imagine, been really uncomfortable for me. I haven't um, done that, uh, but that's just my update. I still still hope it's something that the commission will want to do and will support this the email can be sent around. Um, thank you for the outreach and the update. Um, and I think that it's a concern for all of us. So. Um, you know, any, any assistance that we can have, I think would be appreciated. Um, comments from the rest of the commissioners? I think it's, a, I think these lighthouses are, should be a priority for, for the town, but for us to help enable the, the town to, to hmm. make something happen because nothing's happening and they need to be, um, you know, whether it's through decommissioning and getting another organization involved, mm -hmm. I think we can on the Coast Guard to maintain so I think we need to look and explore all the alternatives that would help us um, that go forward. So maybe decommissioning is the best route. Well, and Great Point would have to be determined to be in historic structure. To be, so. I, I have something that I was going to say about that, but it was inclusive in, uh, in the email that we all received from Agus from Ken, but I was going to say it towards the end of the meeting, but when we say it now, I'll say it now. I mean, but it's about a lot of other stuff, and I don't want to pull up the meeting. Can I say one thing about Great Point before you do that? Yeah. Have you talked to the trustees at all? Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I, I serve on the property committee for Coast Cape and Coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I believe it is uh, that our, our raising this as a discussion has been really beneficial to, to just get things moving a little bit, you know, with the attention in the press. So um, the trustees are interested in forming a subcommittee to discuss the lighthouse. They no longer have any responsibility for that lighthouse. They don't have the keys to that lighthouse. Really? They, they, um, their agreement with the Coast Guard expired. And after inspecting the inside of the lighthouse, they decided that it just wasn't a place that they could bring visitors. It wasn't necessarily safe and certainly not. I was in there on Christmas day. It was terrifying. It, it yeah. is. Like, <laughs> it's raining paint chips yeah. and rust and mm -hmm. um, it's bad. So they, they don't even, they can access the um, lighthouse on request. Yeah. yeah, obviously it's a very collaborative. The land that that lighthouse is on is owned by the Fish and Wildlife Service and they all work together. Um, but yes, so the trustees is really would like to do something. They had a very positive um, news, which is their um, government advocate and government coordinator that they employ, she's on the staff of, of the trustees. Her name is Linda Oriel. She was able to be successful in, in um, getting what's called an earmark, mm -hmm. which is additional funds put into a state spending bill. That did. I don't know if it passed. I've been meaning to write to them. Okay. But, heard, but I did send a letter oh, to thank staff you, Holly. in support of that. That's great. Um, which went to the commission. Thank you for sending that. Um, basically, this it, it's Dylan Fernandez, our representative, was behind that. Thanks to Dylan. Um, and asking um, the state to put an additional fifty thousand dollars to the trustees um, for the benefit of doing a structural analysis on Great Point Road, and we're obviously, um, I think, the town from that perspective would be remiss if we didn't say, "Hey, this is a good thing." And it has nothing to do with the town; it's just support. Yeah, it would just be helpful for our tourism and our image. And Angus also wrote a letter on behalf of the Historical Commission to, it all went to Dylan Fernandez's office so that when he got up on the floor, he could say, I've got the support from the Historical Commission, I've got support from the Town Preservation Planner, I've got support from this, you know, other people who were the trustees members. Wrote. So, so that's good because it won't lead to making the Coast Guard fix it, but it will lead to a more concrete discussion that can happen um, about what needs to be done. And we all know, you know, you're more likely to be able to make something happen if you can be really specific and directive about what needs to happen. Right. Um, the last update is that because of the Community Preservation Act grant to Sanctity and to the Sponsored Trust, mm -hmm. um, the gentleman from International Chimney who is doing that work is going to come out here in the fall. Um, and he offered to just visit Great Point. He did the 2015 structural assessment. So he's going to visit Great Point, check it out, give them feedback. So that's also a real positive. So I think a lot of stuff is happening. And um, I guess I, I would like to hear this commission talk a little bit about the nomination um, because we can figure out how to fix this lighthouse, but it's going to be a lot easier to make it happen if, if it could be accepted. We, we can't control whether or not it's accepted as uh, put to the National Register, but we can control whether or not it's nominated. And only, we're the only people that can control whether or not it's nominated. So what is the process? Um, so as a certified local government, we would uh, fill out a form to nominate it um, to the Massachusetts Historical Commission for, for we would ask for, what is it called, Holly, an advisory opinion or a contingent yeah. opinion? It's like, normally the MHC has to, has to nominate these, but because of our status, we can nominate them directly to the MHC and they have 30 days to get back to us. They have to deal with it. And the form is very simple, but it does require a lot of, you know, you basically have to put together a nomination report. It's like a form B times 10. Yeah. Um, and so what what we could do that you have to pay somebody to do that. Okay. And in our last meeting, we decided somebody should be paid. Someone with credentials should be paid to do that. So we need to ask the town for, you know, $2,500 or whatever it would cost. That's what we had estimated. Um, and if they say no, you know, maybe the Keep Nantucket Real Fund at the, um, at the community foundation would pay for that, um, or a donor would pay for that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's what, what we were going to do. But 
but I mean, I'm a little concerned and maybe Tom should say whatever he was gonna say because you know, this commission has been sanctioned for like doing stuff off the range. So is this off the range? I don't know. Before anybody else goes further on that, I just wanted to mention, and I think I mentioned this before, that if this is something, the CLG, now remember the CLG may have this commission and the HGCL, if this is something the CLG wants to um, move forward on, then I would recommend having a, um, basically an information request discussion with the select board. Because doing, I would hate to see time and effort spent and then trying, you know, basically so you can justify why, why would the town want to do this? We kind of harkened on it a minute ago. I mean, if this is part of our culture, people come here for that. Um, it, and education, you know, I'm very big on education. Educate on why this would be something important. It's not because again, at the end of the day, going through all that process, we do want to nominate, we do get their support to do that. The town has to sign off on that as well. Um, so, you know, that's something that I would think first and foremost, bring all the information together, have some sort of presentation to say, this is something what this, these two commissions as a CLG would like to do. Here's why, this is what it entails. And I know the town's also gonna to wanna to know what, what that, nom what that um, nominal cost is going to be. When you say the town, you're talking about the select board? I'm talking about the select, yeah, the select board. Select. I think the Coast Guard also has to agree. I think so too. Yeah, um, that's but Holly, I do, I, I, I have a, um, so it's the historical commission that's responsible for these nominations. Correct. Um, but I guess if the HTC said we don't want you to nominate them, <laughs> no, the but historical commission doesn't you you have the authority mm -hmm. that this commission, this commission has the authority through the CLG to nominate. No. I mean, because of because being of a it. member of the CLG program, yes, we have the ability to nominate. Yes. This individual yeah. group right here. Yeah, but we don't go to another commission and say we're nominating through you. No, the CLG, the certified local government program is a program. It is a program. Yeah. Right. right. But My, what I'm hearing from Holly is that it sounds like having the HDC on board for the nomination it would go a long way. I think and there's no, I mean, yes. unless the HDC doesn't care about Great Point Light. And I, I think they do. I don't know anyone that doesn't care about it. I have to agree. And, and I think that it's important to have the endorsement of the town, Yes. Uh, of course. So um, what is the best, um, what's the best series or progression of steps towards that nomination? What um, What's next? I think Holly had a great suggestion. To, to, to present it to the select board. Mm -hmm. The only comment I have about that is that, you know, when you, someone has to do the work and decide whether or not, it's not obvious, you know, it's not unobvious, but it's not obvious that it will be. And someone has to, I, I think going to the select board without more information would be a, not that productive. Correct. And, and back to what David just said about the HGC, my, my whole point on that is, because you you can't have a CLG without a a body of of review. Um, and with Nantucket, it's the, through our special act at, as the HDC. And one of those things too is we have a minimum maintenance bylaw. The HDC is required to make sure. So at the end of the day, too, this town through the HDC could be issuing the United States government on the on the conditions that both those two lighthouses are at, at this present time. So again, it's really important to, to make sure that you know it's it's a collective effort, even though the serving aspect of um, it, it falls down to, to this commission. Yes, I just oh I am a collaborator. I'd like to have that as a collaborated effort, and it will require some a little bit of education. Yes. So where is the information coming from and who's going to come up with it? The information that is lacking, Holly, where, where does that come from and what do you think is the best way to um, gather it? Somebody's going to have to spend some time on PowerPoint presentation with 
you know, what exactly is the nomination, what it entails, why does the town want to do it, what is the cost going to be for the town? Um, I mean, those are things that are always, you know, as a town employee and staff member, um, I always have to keep the back of my head, obviously, as a taxpayer, I want to make sure it's a huge pay with a grant, let's do it. But at the end of the day, is there a funding available for the nominal $2,500 for us to hire a consultant to go through the process? What does that process entail? Um, which is, uh, We've received, you know, and I think I'm sick of Hillary, I think you might have been copying on that, what we received as um, our CLG packet. So as the CLG coordinator, there's a packet of information telling us exactly what needs to be entailed on that. But again, I think it needs to be very simple, very clear on that the, what is the end result? What do we need to do to get there? And what is the end result? Well, they're going to they're gonna ask you the, the very one question on why do we want to do that? And again, if we're looking at the fact that- you know, could, I, could I say, Holly, could, yes. I, could I say, it seems kind of shocking to me that we have to even debate this to some, this extent. I mean, what am I missing here? This, this is such an iconic structure on Nantucket. Okay, it's not on Main Street, it's not Brent Point, but when you think of Nantucket you th and you think of lighthouses, for heaven's sake, there's great point. It's practically the first thing you see as you approach the island. And to think that we're gonna to have to persuade people that it's important to our, I mean, for heaven's sake, what are they interested in? They're interested in tourism, right? It's important to our physical tourism, to our historic preservation. We've gotta get back into the history of this lighthouse and what it's done and what it's important to. I mean, I understand we're gonna have this engineer come out and tell us about its terrible structural condition. Maybe there are ghosts, that would be even better. But we, we've got to have somebody presenting the fact that this is just an iconic element of Nantucket. What are we going to knock down next? The, the, the congregational church, because it doesn't matter? I mean, I, I just am missing something here. So how we have that we need to be so persuasive over something that seems so obviously an element of our historic fabric and our tourism fabric amazes me. Thank you, Georgia. Uh, David? Brent. Sorry. So Holly's, Holly was asking, you know, um, you know, why to what end? I mean, it's pretty clear, right? Be community benefit. Um, you know, it's so. Is there anything that we can do simultaneously to get letters of support? It sounds like it's in the press. Is there? And this is a question. What, what else can we do to show the select board how many people want this done? How important it is? And look, here's the processes, and we can do this. We have the support of the HTC. You are the you, the select board, will be the only thing pulling this out, right? Well, they'll have to they'll have to sign off on it during yeah, yeah during the whole process. Yeah. But um, yeah, meaning like we would give them the dotted line to sign on, and they have the choice to sign it or not. Yeah, I mean, it, my my, I would be remiss as town staff if I if I said I'm going to help support this commission to move forward on something that our town elected officials are not going to support. I think they will. But again, there, there's going to be questions on what what does this do? What is this? And it might, for all of us, be a very simple, right there and clear. But it's again, a it's a process. And they're going to want to know well, what are were they included in the process? Um, you know, so I mean, I can I can help somebody try to get some of that CLG requirement information together. Um, but I, I do think that you know having an open line of communication, education, educate people. Yeah. Again, that's another mm -hmm. branch of this commission. Educate. So if we were to create like a, a PowerPoint, it would be kind of like a comprehensive document that we would be able to provide, not only to town officials, but to anybody if they want to know why we would be able to answer the good. Yeah. yeah. Mary? Yeah. Um, this town has already fought like hell for this lighthouse once. And I think it's worth reminding people that. I think there are a lot of people that were not here in 84 to 86 that mm. don't remember that we could have like a, you know, just a, a wire range out there. It might be worth probably looking, talking to Lisa Craig because she she's worked in so many coastal communities. Surely there have been yep. other communities that have had the landmark something before it was 50 years old. Yep. And I think there's it's such a clear argument that if this isn't landmark, it's not something they can put together. So, okay. yeah, that's just from a, a public relations perspective. Yep.
I think that's a, a good thing to think about too, Mary, is that there must have been a certain amount of um, evidence uh, and presentation for there to be whatever funds um, mm -hmm. collected for, uh, for that uh, rebuilding of the lighthouse. And so I think that would house probably all the information um, that that any board would want to know is of it why. Is effectively a historic structure because Ted Kennedy held a piece of this old lighthouse on the floor of the U.S. Senate to get it rebuilt? Like, isn't the <laughs> building of this structure part of that history too? Yeah. Well, if, so, so. yeah. Well, and there was a certain amount of justification for, for that, um, and, which you know, if people don't know the history, um, you know, it would be good to be reminded. Tom. Uh, uh, I used to be a ranger at the Great Point uh, until about three or four years ago. And I'm shocked at some of the things I've been hearing. Uh, I was responsible, or we all were as rangers, for giving tours up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I not only would I give tours to the general public, but we also give tours to some of the heavyweight people in the trustees of reservations who would come up there. And it's the number one um, location mm. on all the trustees progress. Mm. And being there and taking those people up there, which I've done, and I used to sneak in there when I was a kid and go up there and drink beer and have sandwiches, and, you know, at the top when you could do that before the trustees took it over, the Bacchuses on the sicknesses. And, uh, and then <clears throat> I can remember it seeing how dilapidated it was, because when I became a ranger, it was 30 years later after it had been built. And uh, it was pretty creepy even then. And so to have it deteriorate to the point now in the last four years since I was done up there is kind of scary in itself. But the, I just wanted to put that in. That so I have a, a little bit more of an informational thing than the average general public mm -hmm. does. We were required as um, as trustees to show up on this one specific day in August when they would have tents brought out there and a huge party with Nicholas out there, lawsuits and all kinds of stuff for all the heavy hitters for the trustees of reservations. And we would circle the wagons and make sure they got up there okay and, and, and they had their party. Um, and so, not only I, do I think that, to Mary's point, the general public, through, I don't care what, what you say, the Congress and Kennedy or whatever, this place is a very, very high uh, visibility, high priority kind of thing. And when I got this email from Ken, uh, I just want to, you know, he represents the town. And so, he states that uh, the fourth bullet point is protecting and maintaining Great Point Light, which is not in capital letters, a historic structure and very little chance of becoming one, and which I indicated at the last meeting should therefore not utilize any staff time on this initiative. It does not seem to be within the purview of the Historical Commission, as it is not a town-owned non-historic structure. It's my opinion. Tom Montgomery, the Historical Commission, has a responsibility to participate in the National Historic Register, which means nominating structures for inclusion on the National Register of Historic Places. Evaluating Great Point Light for inclusion on the National Register is absolutely the purview of this commission, regardless of the fact that it's on federally owned land. The entire commission discussed this with Michael Steinitz, the Massachusetts Historical Commission, uh, a year ago or so. And so Great Point Light is a, a high visibility project, you know, with a lot of public and state interest, and it should get, uh, which, which should help it get on the uh, National Historic Register. Whether it does or not, I don't know. Uh, but if we take this up, it might help it qualify for all kinds of funds, both public and private. And that's why I think we should do it. And if the town's position is they don't think that we should spend enough money to utilize staff to do something about it, that tells me a lot. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, I just find it bizarre that I, I don't, I don't, I just don't know why Kenny would say that. I don't know. I didn't. 
Has anyone spoken to him more? Well, yeah, he was at our last. We meeting. just we just got this. No, but so, so no, I'm I just surprised. Mean, I, mean, I know Ken very it. well personally. Uh, I've never said anything to me about it. I think it goes back to though what Holly said is it sounds like we just need to do a lot more education. And I mean, I don't know how everyone's PowerPoint skills are, but I'd be happy to um very well versed in PowerPoint, my day job, um, put together a nice sleep building presentation. And, and maybe that's part of what we just need to do is really outline, as Holly pointed out, like all these really important parts and like it sounds like there's really rich history, I think. I think that it's it's probably just lack of understanding, I'm hoping, from everyone. But either way, we can reinforce as much as information we have with what the process is, what we need to do, who needs to do what. I mean, I think it sounds like at the very least we should do that. So I'm happy to support that. Uh, thank you, Abby. David? I guess the only concern I have is the directive from Ken sounds like not to use staff time on this and it's always going to advise on CLG requirements and it can meaning can we separate that yeah. from the actual can probably teach us how to nominate structures yeah. <laughs> and, and not them. necessarily a specific structure and then we go through the process of actually what I can do, and, and Ken was very apologetic for not being able to come today. Um, and I do know that. Um, but I can reiterate that to him, you know, and, and say, hey, look, this is something that they want to do. Um, you know, I, 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 you all know how busy I am, but we're all busy in this, in this town. Um, you know, if, if this is something that gets support, then obviously I want to help support it. But I can't do something that doesn't, you know, it's not the power to be for me to say, you know, I have other things for you to do. Um, you know, it's clear. Can I make a suggestion? I, I think, you know, we're, we had the conversation at the last meeting mm -hmm. and made the decision that a letter should be prepared from the commission to the town manager and the select board suggesting that we pursue a nomination, that there be funds in the amount of about $2,500 to be made available by the town to hire a consultant to prepare the nomination and that the nomination be sent to the Massachusetts Historical Commission. And they're the only people who are gonna decide whether or not they and the Park Service. Um, and uh, the town will either want, you know, will either feel it's appropriate and something that they want to do. When I say the town, I mean the select board. Mm -hmm. um, and if they don't, then the commission could decide what to do next, including hiring a consultant. The, the commission is empowered to make nominations um directly and you know i so I, I i think there's the money issue but then there's also the agreement issue and it's mm -hmm. a simple letter i mean just this is the situation we have to have a professional assessment to make a determination we feel it's in the benefit of tourism and the benefit of the town and would do would you agree and do you support us and make an official request that seems very straightforward and if it has to go in front of a meeting, it doesn't necessarily, but they'll let us know. And um, if it's, you know, good to have a PowerPoint, we've got somebody who's great, who's offering our time, which is fantastic. And, um, but I, I, I also, I mean, this is something because I'm on the Great Point Committee mm -hmm. and I've done a lot of work on this. Um, and I've spoken with Michael Steinitz about this and done research. I would like to prepare a letter to that effect and share it. Um, I think that that's a good idea. Is that something that we need to vote on? Um, so you can just ask me. Um, I appreciate all the work that you've done on this already. So it, um, you're, I think you'll do the best job of writing a letter. So uh, I, uh, I think I speak for everyone that the commission would appreciate you writing a letter that we'll send. Great. Thank you. I will do it and I will bring it to you at your next meeting and you can tear it up and throw it in the trash if you don't like it. Just cyber. Thanks. Thank you, Larry. Great. Thanks. Um, is there anything else that anyone wants to bring about that? Oh, um, Brand Point is the other part. The only comment is that I think we want to work with the town, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Of course. And, you know, with their blessing. So I think that making sure that that 
letter explains that, that we, it, I, I'm obviously, um, I, I just didn't want to point that out, but I think we want for the town, we want their help. Of course, it is yeah, for the it is for the town. And that, <laughs> right, and that ultimately this is for the benefit of everyone who lives in this town, and so we're looking at it as the benefit of all of the residents here. Absolutely, so that they understand like that's the angle we're coming from. Exactly. I'm sure that your tourism director would not agree with that statement. That, that it would yeah, be that, that, that it would be a agree. benefit for the town. Yeah, that would agree that it's a benefit for the town. Right. That would agree that it's a high priority. I was referring to the statement policy before. Oh, yeah. Okay. So right. Anything else to wrap? So you bring up it's, planning. So that's a great point. What about grant point? Are we good? Is there further discussion or action on grant point? I don't have anything to provide. Um, I think. Mean, just from from staff's perspective, I do have some ways to contact who's higher up the, the command, if you will, um, who would know more about where Grant Point actually stands within their priority of um, maintenance. Um, as you all probably remember, um, there's a lot of public outcry, not just the commission, a lot of public outcry for over a year, um, and I got in contact with. One man on phone call, another one man on phone call called me with information from the person that is, is higher up who I need to call um, and find out a little bit more on where we stand. Um, you know, I mentioned that there was asbestos that they looked for. Um, asbestos is in the building itself. Apparently, it's not on the outside, which is good. I've explained to a lot of people, including myself, who had funny photos taken at that iconic location. Um, and it is historic and it is on the national, you know. It's, it, it is um, important to us. Um, so um, hopefully by next um, meeting, I'll have some more information. Thank you, Holly. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have um, any new information about Grand Point? Well, I think at the last, I'd have to look at the minutes of the last meeting, but I think we, um, I think there was a follow up. I don't about where it put like the second letter and Ken said write two different letters and kind of do you feel like what all of that contributes to this I do remember something about there being a conversation about one letter for great point and a separate letter for great point. I have the notes from that. You do? Okay. I do too. Um from what I'm reading was to the motion was from Tom and Angus to compose a letter summarizing the NHC's discussion advice to draft to review draft the letter with Holly and Ken and then present it to the town select board. No, that's great point. Great point also. Um with the yeah, you know, point is on the yeah. I thought that it's great point. I mean, our rent point is actually owned by the Coast Guard. Yeah, the the lease, Coast Guard. Right? But the land is also the Coast Guard. The town mm -hmm. had the, a lease something with, like that, yeah. For the hatchery, which is historic resource. So. so we have yet to work on that letter. Must be summer on Nantucket. Not mm -hmm. a lot of extra time. Um, <laughs> well, then let's leave that on the the to do list. Um, so the next thing, um, next thing on the agenda are the the LED street lights. Um, has anyone else been able to um, to view the light at night? And have any comments? Thanks, Scott. I'll definitely go and take a look at um, what, what is um there's a street light committee that's going that's what is going on with the street light LED thing? No information on that. Um well all, all I can really mention is from up in an email that we had um earlier in our session shared with Lauren Sonanda on June 13th that um, they had, by that point, they had dimmed the fixture to uh, 
70% brightness, while the 22,000 uh, color matches the existing um, HPS fixture, the LED was over was brighter. We welcome the thoughts of you and the board. So they do want to, it's, it's, it's our energy coordinator, Lawrence Nasa, along with our DPW department. Um, they have, there's some, some money that they got from the remaining. Um, and there is the, to work on a, a feasibility. Um, so oh, and, and this is located outside the, the, the example one for us to look at is outside of town pool on Main Street. So they're looking for our comments regarding that existing work. Yes, yes, on how it is included within the overall historic. Because the town owns those lights. Mm -hmm. So there was a comment about if we so we're not we don't have any prepared comments, it sounds like so if we get some prepared by our next meeting in August, is that going to be a, a time for them to receive that? I think so. Um, I mean, obviously, the sooner that, even if you even have any comments on the board of that's, that's not a problem. I think that would be. So we could do that individually mm -hmm. at, our, at our own time. Mm -hmm. Probably a more expeditious to do that way. Right? Probably, I think the way we left it too was that we were we were going to invite uh, Lawrence Natra to join uh, in one of our meetings, and maybe um, Gail Walker with the Dark Skies um, to. Um, but but it was after we had an opportunity to to look at the light and talk about the the um, you know the aesthetics. So we'll see that for next meeting. I think that's a great idea, especially if they now have money to do this yeah. assessment. It's a great opportunity for this mm -hmm. commission to look at the various lighting styles and because yeah. that will surely be considered in the assessment. Um, who usually does the invitations? Should it? You. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, so I'll invite Lauren Sinatra uh, and. I think she I, also wanted to wait until the feasibility study was on because it's, I think it's ongoing right now. Um, but yeah, I know you, you had more conversations with her than I did. Yeah, she was fantastic. I mean, she really wanted the input of this commission. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, Gail wanted to bring, a ben bring her vendor to come and present different styles. And Lauren and I decided that it was just a little premature. Um, but I think it, yeah, I, I guess I think it would be a great time for you and Georgia to raise your hand and say, congratulations on the grant. And we'd love to be a part of the, discussing the fixtures. And I think it's good. I, I think we're late to the party. We should, we should have had this done on this meeting right now. And uh, because two meetings ago, uh, the asked us to go take a look at it. I think I was the only one on the board that did. And I think now we should be giving them some feedback rather than organizing a group to go take a look at it. But, I, um, well, I think anyone who hasn't looked at it can look at it between now and our next meeting, um, but certainly to, um, Give them the comments, but we we uh, are still we're still waiting to have like a presentation of what the options are. Um, so I think we're still in in time for that, David. Yeah, I just find it. I walked by it the light and looked at it, but it's you know all you can do is compare it to what else is existing here yeah. without you know an understanding of what it could look like in the, in the world. So I think that's the trouble. So I do think we benefit from having Gail, you know, come in and talk about different vendors and different options. Obviously, it's good for them to have a prerequisite understanding of what is outside town pool. But it's hard to hard for me to comment technically mm -hmm. or really any capacity until I see comparison. Comparisons. Correct. Sure. Um, so what we're really looking at is um, we're talking about the August nineteenth meeting. So on a related topic to that is that right now the Pacific Bank has an application to the HTC to change the lighting all around the bank. Yes, and I made a public comment that the agent needs to communicate with the town on what type of 
lighting that they're doing that the town is working on with the feasibility study, that it would be imperative that they um, communicate with each other. So, did this go? Has this gone in front of the HDC yet? They, they reviewed back in May. Um, and instead of submitting an old business, they submitted a new business. Long story short, they were just before the commission a month ago or so. But we're on time that we're having a discussion with Warren. Um, they haven't been back. So I don't know where they stand. If they reached out to Warren at all, I have no idea. Yeah. I just want to make sure the HDC sees this as something that needs to be really focused on as a kind of a cooperative effort. Yeah, oh, yes, that. absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yep. I made that point to the HDC. Because okay. exactly. they're proposing a lot of lighting around the bank. They, they are. Drastically yeah. different than that. And the HDC is, is very concerned on it, too. Good. So it's a lot and a lot of aspects of it. That's great. Yeah, I happen to watch that meeting. I'm not sure why, because I hardly ever watch them, but the HCC was like, you need to give us the style of English. So, yeah, they yeah. were very, very much. Yeah, not much information was provided. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And it was clearly a situation where the consultant had been given like a whole list of buildings that the A owns mm -hmm. and said, yes. you know, go through the checklist. So, yes. it's possible that they just won't be back. Um, okay, so we are at just a couple of minutes um, left. Um, there's still the old business things, coordinating and collaborating with the HTC about building with Dan Duckett in mind and the MOU um, that I, I think we've left with the uh, HTC. Um, to sign? Yeah, so Angus and I had a meeting with Abby and Diane, Abby Camp and Diane, and um, came up with an agreement. And um, Holly, what, have they even, have they discussed it? Because Diane actually said to me, yeah, everybody agreed to sign it. And I thought, that's odd. I didn't hear anything about that. She told me, I guess, right after you guys all met, and that was, that was it. So she, they, the two of them need to communicate that to the rest of the commission. Oh. Well, is that something that could be in your hands as our coordinator? Yeah, I'll, I mean, the other question is just basically one. Because Ken, you know, Ken's email said that Stephen, I it just seems like Ken's email said that Stephen Welch was now going to be on point, and it was just a little hard to understand okay. how she was getting off point. I think she was getting off the seal. Is it? And and um, Abby Camp and Diane were, were sort of taking that over. Yeah. So they voted to have Abby and Diane work on the HCC section of the MOU. Okay. which they communicated and had a meeting with the two of you. That's right. Separate from the building with Nantucket in mind, oh, at yeah. which yeah. that's the part that I, I think okay. Stephen is uh, maybe wanting to head up, which we've been excited about working on for yes. ever. And I, I will tell you, I know that um, the organization committee, folks committee that the HDC has, which is spearheaded by Stephen Welch, will... Uh, is coming back into play. It's a moving function of things. For instance, the, um, there'll be a discussion here shortly bringing up the solar on town meeting. So, yeah, there's a lot of different initiatives going on, um, and I'm assuming that will also be as well. So, but I will touch base with Diane and Abby on um, where that stands on the MOU. I, I was letting them handle it, but yeah, I'll find out. They, um, the last thing on the agenda is just the statement of need for the re revolving loan fund. It, is there anything that um, Georgia or David want to say about that? Is there anything new? I'll just say Georgia and I's meeting uh, scheduled for last Wednesday got canceled uh, coronavirus. So, oh, um, but I'm back and we're going to meet, um, I think, this upcoming week. So we'll have like, something for you guys for next year. Excellent. Um, well, unless anyone has something to add, I'll take a, a motion for adjournment. Do I hear a second? second. 
Uh, all in favor, uh, Georgia? Uh, so I have a question. Yes. To adjourn. Yes. You know, we have a, you guys have a wonderful new resource at the table with a small loan fund. Right. Someone who knows about finance? Someone who works <laughs> for a bank and could actually advise with real knowledge on that. It has, Abby, has anyone explained to you the idea behind the small loan fund? No, but maybe if you guys are going to have a meeting. Do you, you want to join us for coffee? Can we do that with three? Yeah. 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 I use tag in and we will get you on the email. Perfect. That's fantastic. Great yeah. idea, Hillary. <laughs> and thank you, Abby, for rising for that one. Um, okay, so back to our, our um, adjournment. So uh, Mickey, Aye. Uh, Tom, Aye. David, Aye. Uh, Abby, Aye. and I as well. So we are adjourned. Thank you all. And, and uh, hopefully next time is a little bit smoother. <laughs> oh, <and I> <laughs>